This is a lecture on chronic inflammatory bowel disease in the feline and in the canine. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a lecture on chronic inflammatory bowel disease. Mostly we see that in the, in the dog, but also in the cat. Chronic inflammatory bowel disease is a condition um, like irritable bowel syndrome, essentially, all these things are kind of lumped together, essentially, it produces a kitty cat that has difficulties and chronic diarrhea, essentially. It is a nightmare for veterinarians who have treated with various types of diets, uh, various types of protectants in the, in the digestive system. We'll treat them with uh, probiotics, we'll treat them with immune suppression, we'll treat them with steroids, we'll do all kinds of things to try to get the kitty cat to have from having squirting poop. Essentially, the cat will waste away, and so it's, not, it's kind of a nightmare for the veterinarian. It is an autoimmune phenomenon. What happens is compromised blood supply to the jejunum, the cat's gut, basically causes a breakdown of the integrity of the epithelial tissue and the mucus, mu uh, mucus material, I'm sorry, um, uh, mucus membranes of the, of the digestive systems. And what happens is they break down and start to leak. And as they leak, essentially, the body basically... Um, uh, leaks material that's undigested right into the bloodstream, the body becomes allergic to that essentially, and then we end up with a chronic inflammatory condition occurring in the wall of the gut. And what happens then is we end up with the, it being uh, edematous, backing up in fluid, it won't drain information, or it won't drain fluid out of it, and it becomes ropey and rubbery, has a rubbery type of gut essentially, and angry, and it doesn't move very well and it doesn't function very well, so the food just kind of goes shooting through the animal, doesn't really get digested. This is an autoimmune phenomenon, and it's held in place by uh, originally by lack of blood supply to the GI tract, essentially. One of the things that we will do with these animals is we will uh, do what's called a somatovisceral therapy, which basically will uh, rehabilitate the, uh, um, the actual blood supply to the GI tract. Which, by the way, when you do that, as you put blood back into the GI tract, and it starts to basically uh, uh, remove all the edematous fluids from the gut, essentially, it may take five or six days for that to occur. It's going to dump that fluid into the gut, most commonly and also the kidneys so the animal will pee like crazy but what will happen the animal will has the owner's complaint was diarrhea and now for the four or five days the animal is really going to have disgusting diarrhea essentially which is part of the healing process we can also you do that same type of therapy use, utilizing laser therapy and we'll utilize this approach to do exactly that uh, the frequency for the kitty cat is 216 for the gut 96 for the stomach 90 83 and for the colon is 20 and that's the frequencies that we use for about 180 seconds twice a day for three days once a day for three days twice a week two weeks essentially this is the approach that we use to take care of that particular uh, condition too with a cat without having to even adjust them or use this condition this is frequency specific low level laser therapy now as I mentioned to you chronic inflammatory bowel disease is held in place by an immune mediated or autoimmune type of phenomenon so once we're treating the gut successfully like this we also have to make sure we uncouple the body from this immune mediated cascade. This is why immune suppression and corticosteroids ha actually benefit this animal because the corticosteroid of choice is, is prednisone and prednisone is immune suppressive and so we're not removing inflammation what we're doing is we're suppressing the immune response so we can use the frequency specific laser therapy as a means to go ahead then and we can hyposensitize the um, actual system and we can laser this animal essentially with the correct frequencies 887.5, 73.24, 667, 343. We go into that rather extensively in the advanced laser courses and basic laser courses that you can find in the vomtech.com website essentially and we can give you more information about how this technique works. The nature and the, and the, the uh, elements and the mechanism by, uh, we, by removing animals allergy autoimmune phenomenon and treating this condition essentially which is essential for treating chronic inflammatory bowel disease and, the, and also um, this condition in the dog and the cat is too extensive for me to go into in this short lecture essentially but I would encourage you to go to the website we'll spend in the actual courses actually um, hours showing you exactly what the mechanism is by which this happens and how it is that we're able to affect the body without even touching it with laser light essentially light that basically is non deleterious do not repeat do not repeat do not try to treat 
chronic inflammatory bowel disease or immune mediated disease conditions using a class 4 laser a laser that you have to wear glasses with if you have to wear glasses it's the wrong laser you're using it as a heating device and this produces zero heat as you can see so my recommendation is that you learn the difference between frequency specific lasers at 5 milliwatts and other so-called veterinary lasers which are high powered and they are basically portable microwave devices if you microwave this kitty cat's gut with a high powered laser you're going to get a dead cat or at least eventually you're going to get a cat that gets actually better for, for a day or so and then worse significantly worse this has been a lecture on chronic inflammatory bowel disease mostly in the kitty cat but also in the dog essentially how we treat it using a combination of somatovisceral therapy and frequency specific low level laser therapy thank you and have a great day